fold upon one another and they become increased in size hypertrophy and have a certain pigment called lutein this are the granulosa cells which ultimately form the corpus luteum the study of bones is called osteology there are about 206 bones in the human body now the arrangement of the bones inside the human body is called a skeleton as we have already said there are about 206 bones which are arranged as a skeleton in the human body now the skeleton if we are to study it it can be actually divided into two parts one contains the bones which fall in the midline of the body and the other set is the bones which lie away from the midline of the body so the bones that lie in the midline are called axial skeleton the bones that lie away from the midline constitute the appendicular skeleton the bones that lie in the midline of the body constitute your axial skeleton the bones that lie in the limbs which are away from the midline constitute the appendicular skeleton therefore the skull vertebral column ribs pelvis all come under the axial skeleton because they are in the midline of the body now those parts which are away from the midline which are connected to these areas are the upper limb and the lower limb bones therefore the upper limb and lower limb bones constitute the appendicular skeleton now let's look at how these bones are actually arranged first we have the axial skeleton you have the skull which is a which is like a box and it encloses certain structures it encloses the brain and the eyes the brain and the eyes the cavity inside the skull is called cranium the cavity inside the skull is called the cranium or cranial cavity and that contains the brain and the eyes the part of the skull that contains the eyes is called orbit the part of the skull which contains the eyes is called orbit or orbital cavity next we come to vertebral column and ribs we have something called a girdle a girdle means a cage or a bony enclosure in which internal organs are contained this girdle in the trunk is called pectoral girdle the girdle in the trunk is called pectoral girdle and the girdle in the pelvic region is called pelvic girdle let's now classify the bones there are different types of bones first classified based on size based on size you can classify the bones as short bones long bones flat bones and sesamoid bones short bones o obviously the size of the bone is small or they are short in length for example carpal bones or bones of the wrist joint or bones of the ankle joint which are called the tarsal bones carpals that's the wrist tarsals that's the ankle bones those are examples of short bones also your the bones of the digits or phalanges the bones of the digits or phalanges next you have long bones all the long bones in your body that is the bones of the upper arm arm thigh 
leg, etc. The bone of the upper arm is called humerus. The bone of the thigh is called the femur. These are the single long bones that are present in your body. The thigh bone or the femur is the single largest, strongest or the biggest bone in your entire body. The femur is the biggest bone in your entire body. You also have long bones like radius and ulna in the forearm. So those are your long bones. Femur, humerus, radius, the ulna, etc. Next you have flat bones. These are mostly the bones present in the axial skeleton. For example, skull, ribs, vertebral column, pelvic girdle bones, etc. All of them come under flat bones. The last thing is sesamoid. Sesamoid bone or the bone that is shaped like a sesame seed or a till seed. The most common example or the most important example is the bone in your kneecap that's called the patella. That is the most important sesamoid bone. The patella or kneecap that is your sesamoid bone. The classification on the bones based on size you will find short bones, long bones, flat bones, sesamoid bones. Let's now look at the parts of a long bone. The long bone has an articulating surface which, which may be called a head. It has a shaft that would be the articulating surface. Two articulating surfaces of a long bone. They are curved and the shaft is straight. This is called the shaft. Now when we look at the parts of a long bone, we can see that the two ends of the bone which are flattened and modified for articulation are called epiphyses. Singular is called SIS epiphyses. A plural would be SES epiphyses. Okay, so two epiphyses for a long bone. Those are the ends of the bone. Yes, the middle of the bone is called a shaft. This is called the diaphysis. Now the area at the junction between the diaphysis and the epiphysis is called metaphysis. It's called the metaphysis. It is at the junction between the diaphysis and the epiphysis. This area. This thin area will be called the metaphysis or metaphysial plate. Now what is the importance of these three areas? Epiphysis of the bone are the articulating surfaces of the bone. They form the joint. The diaphysis of the bone within it has a cavity. If you take a big knife and you cut the bone in the middle and you open it out, you will find a cavity in the diaphysis called the The cavity in the center is called the medullary cavity. It's called the medullary cavity. This is the seat of hemopoiesis. Hemopoiesis is nothing but production of blood and its cells. Therefore, medullary cavity of the diaphysis produces blood and its cells. This is called the hemopoietic center in the bone that is present in the diaphysis. Next you have the metaphysis. The purpose of the metaphysis is growth of the bone. When a child increases in stature or when a child grows tall, what is the area of the bone that increases in length? It increases at the metaphysis. 
the growth of the metaphysis contributes to the growth of the bone so this is the growing area of the bone after a certain point in time for example after 18 years of age everybody stops growing in height that is the time when the metaphysical plate disappears the metaphysical plate disappears and your height stays static that is the time where the metaphysical plate disappears so these are the three parts of the long bone and the and the functions of the same epiphysis is the articulating surface of the bone diaphysis has the medullary cavity which is the hemopoietic center of the bone this has the bone marrow it has the bone marrow this is the red area inside the bone which produces blood and the metaphysis or the metaphysical plate is the growth area of the long bone